everyone, my name is William. Today we're going to talk about Eulerian paths and circuits from a computer science perspective. We're going to start with discussing what Euler paths and circuits are, how to determine their existence, how to find them, and lastly we're going to look at some code to wrap things up. Let's begin with what an Eulerian path is. An Euler path, also called an Eulerian trail, is a path of edges in a graph that visits every edge exactly once. Suppose we have the undirected graph below and we want to find an Eulerian path. First off, not every graph has an Eulerian path. This one does, but even still, we need to be careful about which node we start our path at. Suppose we begin the path at the middle right node and decide to follow the path left, down, up, up again, and finally left. This completes the Eulerian path. However, suppose we start at the top node, what happens if we decide to find a path from this node? If we take the edge going down, you'll notice that we are now stuck. We cannot go anywhere else from this node since there are no edges left to follow. More importantly, the issue is that we have unvisited edges that we still have not used or traversed. So we'll see how to resolve or rather avoid this issue altogether later so that we always find an Eulerian path when we know one exists. Moving on, let's talk about Eulerian circuits, also called Eulerian cycles. An Eulerian circuit is an Eulerian path which starts and ends on the same vertex. So similar to Eulerian paths, not every graph has an Eulerian circuit, but the following graph does. If you know your graph has an Eulerian circuit, then you can begin the circuit at any node. I'm going to begin the circuit on the orange node and also end it on the orange node. And that's the full circuit. If your graph does not contain an Eulerian circuit, you may not be able to return to the start node or you will not be able to visit all the edges of the graph. For example, let's start another circuit starting from the same node on this slightly modified graph. So by randomly selecting edges to traverse, we weren't able to make it back to the starting node. Furthermore, we also have unvisited edges, so that's double bad. Luckily for us, we don't have to guess whether or not a graph contains an Eulerian path or an Eulerian circuit. We can inspect the graph we're dealing with by counting the in and out degrees of each node to determine whether or not the graph meets one of the conditions in this table. There are four flavors of Eulerian paths and circuits that we care about. And those are whether the graph is directed or undirected, and whether or not we want to find an Eulerian path or an Eulerian circuit. All of these variants talk about node degrees, so I want to have a quick look at that before coming back to this table. The degree of a node means different things depending on whether the graph we're dealing with is directed or undirected. In an undirected graph, the node degree is simply how many edges are attached to a particular node. The blue node in this picture has three edges attached to it, so its degree is three. In a directed graph, there are two forms of node degrees. There are in degrees and out degrees because the edges are directed. The in degree is the number of incoming edges to a node, and the out degree of a node is the number of outgoing edges from that node. So in the example on the right, the in degree of the node is 2, while the out degree is 1. Pretty simple. Coming back to the table, you should be able to understand the constraints required for each variant of 
the Eulerian path and Eulerian circuit problem. However, let's go over them one by one anyways. The simplest case is when we have an undirected graph and we want to find an Eulerian circuit. The requirement for this is that every node in the graph has an even degree. The Eulerian path problem on an undirected graph is very similar, except that in addition that every vertex has an even degree, you can also have exactly two vertices which have an odd degree. Those two vertices, if they exist, would be the start and end nodes of the Eulerian path. On a directed graph, you can have an Eulerian circuit if every vertex has an equal in and out degree. This is the counterpart to the undirected graph version. The last variant is finding an Eulerian path on a directed graph. For there to exist an Eulerian path on a directed graph, at most one vertex has an out degree minus an in degree which is equal to 1, and at most one vertex has an in degree minus an out degree equal to 1, and all other ver vertices have equal in and out degrees. So it's now quiz time, and I'm going to make sure you've been paying attention. I'm going to present to you various graphs, and you need to determine whether the following graph has an Eulerian path, an Eulerian circuit, or both. So we'll start with undirected graphs and then later move on to directed graphs. Please feel free to pause the video to think things over. So this graph has no Eulerian path or circuit. You can tell because there are too many nodes with an odd degree. How about this graph? Again, feel free to pause the video. This graph has an Eulerian path and the green nodes represent the valid start and end nodes for the Eulerian path. What about this graph? This graph has both an Eulerian path and an Eulerian circuit. As a side question, true or false, if a graph has an Eulerian circuit, it also has an Eulerian path. I'll give you a moment to think about it. The answer is true. Any circuit is an Eulerian path. Here's another one. Are there any paths or circuits in this graph? This one is a bit of a trick question, but there are no Eulerian paths or circuits here. An additional requirement I have not yet mentioned is that when finding paths and circuits is that all vertices with non-zero degree need to belong to a single connected component. And here we have two connected components, so we cannot have an Eulerian path or circuit. Now let's have a look at an example with a directed graph. Does the following graph have any Eulerian paths or circuits? I'll give you a moment to think about it. Yes, this graph has both an Eulerian path and an Eulerian circuit because all in and out degrees are equal. What about this graph? This graph has no Eulerian paths or circuits. The red nodes either have too many incoming or outgoing edges for an Eulerian path or circuit to exist. What about this graph? I'll give you a bit more time because there are a lot of edges. This graph only has an Eulerian path, but no Eulerian circuit. It also has a unique start and end node for the path. Note that the singleton node has no incoming or outgoing edges, so it doesn't impact whether or not we have an Eulerian path. Okay, that's it for this video on the existence of Eulerian paths and circuits for directed and undirected graphs. I hope that made sense. Please give this video a thumbs up if you learned something, and also stick around for the next video where things get even more interesting and we have a look at an algorithm to actually find these Eulerian paths and circuits. Bye.